Hi everyone and welcome to Johnny How To. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some one point tracking. We might get into two point tracking, but I wanna focus mostly on one point tracking and how I can use that to both stabilize and match move different elements and use it in different ways within different comps. So we're gonna start off really, really basic here with just a sticky note on a wall. And let's go ahead and play this back. I have this set to input, so it's gonna play back just the frames that actually has to do with this video. And not very exciting, not a whole lot going on, right? It's just a wobbly handheld camera zoomed in on this triangle on the sticky note on the wall. So if I wanted to take the camera movement out of this shot or add something in there that looks like it's moving along with it, the way I would do that is with a tracker node. So the tracker node by itself, and I'll go and just press tab and type tracker. The tracker node needs to monitor or follow any particular point or pattern in your image. So I'm gonna go and plug the tracker into this footage itself, double click and press one to make sure I'm viewing it. And from the get-go, I don't see any tracking squares that I'm used to seeing that I'll explain to you in a little bit because there's not any actually created yet. So I need to click on add track. This is gonna create this little box right here. And let me explain kind of what this does because uh, for a while this actually was a little bit confusing to me. So basically, when I position this, like say over this point right here, it's going to track not just this point, which I thought at first that's what that does a long time ago, but it tracks this entire pattern region. So it's gonna try and follow this region from frame to frame and match the movement or just follow it as it goes along. So that's what this inner square is, is the pattern that it's trying to follow. Now the outer square is how far it's allowed to look from frame to frame to try and follow that frame. So in this case, and notice I'm starting on frame one right here, I'll talk about why that's significant in just a second, but say the camera was moving crazily crazily all over and the triangle was moving all the way over here or over here or down here. That means that I need to make this square, this outer square, that's the follow region, how far it's allowed to look larger because otherwise if I say I make it really, really small and it moves from one frame from here to here, well, it's only allowed to look this far from frame to frame. That means it's going to lose that spot and your track is either going to fail or it's gonna accidentally jump to a different spot. It's not gonna be accurate anymore. Now, you might think, okay, well, why don't I just make that the entire size of the entire composition? And the problem with that is now it has exponentially more pixels that it has to search from frame to frame to try and follow that particular, find that particular region. So it's kind of a trial and error sometimes and making educated guesses on how big you need this because it needs to be large enough to follow along with the pattern you're tracking, but you don't wanna make it too big to where it's having to track too many pixels because it'll slow down the processing. And you run the risk of, say for instance, if this was a repeating pattern, this little triangle, and there's something similar, like say there's a sweater or there's a repeating pattern on a post or something like that or anything else, it might think, oh, this is actually what he's tracking. It might jump to a different spot. So the more fine-tuned you're able to make it and, and keep it following that, probably the better you're gonna be off. The reason uh, I'm going to mention that I'm on frame one right now is because in the settings tab, I'm sorry, in the transform tab, there is what's called a reference frame. And that's not going to play too much of a factor in this particular instance, but this is basically going to be your, say, home base frame. And you can set this to whatever frame you want. Say frame 100 seemed like a good place to start. You can go and start on frame 100 and set, say, set to current frame, and your reference frame is going to be 100. Because basically what it's going to do is imagine you have a grid on this entire screen and it moved from here up to here in one frame, just one pixel up and one pixel over. So it's like having a piece of graph paper and you moved one on the y-axis, one on the x-axis. And basically what the tracker node does is it just remembers those numbers. It plots, okay, you moved one pixel up, one pixel to the right, and then you moved four pixels down and four, 10 pixels to the right. It just kind of remembers the pixels and whatever you have set to your reference frame is your zero, zero, your origin point. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go and just set this to frame one, but that is gonna be important potentially in other projects down the road. I wanted to mention that. So I'm gonna go back to my tracker tab. I'm going to go ahead and this is another gotcha that happens quite often is you don't actually click play or forward on the actual viewer controls. That's going to play back the footage, but not actually do your tracking. All your tracking controls are up here. I'm not going to go through all these right now, but I'll go through a few of them. And some of our stop tracking, track one frame forward, go ahead and track to the end, and then you can track just a particular range. So say I only wanted to track until frame 
100 or 120 or 111. You can have it track only a particular range and you can track forwards and backwards. So in this case, I'm at the beginning of my frame range and I want to track until the end. Actually, maybe I'll only go until frame 100. So I'll go ahead and click on this range right here and it's saying, what's your first frame? And then what's your last frame? I'm gonna, okay, I'm only gonna track from frame one to 100 and step meaning how many frames is gonna look at at a time. I'm gonna do every single frame. So one to 100, go and click okay. And up here, you can kind of diagnose if your track is going well or not. Is that little crosshair or is that region staying centered? And it looks like it did. If I drag through the footage, you can see that it doesn't really wiggle around that much. And even though the camera's moving a lot, you can see that all these dots are keyframes. If I go to the dope sheet or to zoom in a little bit, you can see that every single frame has a keyframe that it monitored as it was playing back. Now, the cool thing about Nuke is it's very, very fast. It didn't take long to track that. Not that this is high resolution footage, but it is way faster than programs that had uh, happened in the fast. And of course, the hardware has gotten better as well. So now that this has been tracked, we can use this tracking information in a number of ways. The first way, which you might want to do with shaky footage, say you don't have a tripod or you were moving around uh, the camera and you wanted to be a little bit smoother, is you can go to the transform tab and set the transform to say stabilize. And there is a difference between stabilize and stabilize one point, but for this case, it actually doesn't make much of a difference. So I'm gonna go and click on stabilize. And what this does is it inverts what the shot was doing. So if the shot moved up five pixels and over five pixels up into the right, it's going to move it down five pixels and to the left five pixels to counteract that. So it's kind of the inverse. So now if I view the tracker and play this back, between frame zero and 100, it actually looks like this shot is stabilized now. Now, as soon as I hit frame 100, it's gonna move as it did normally, because remember, I only tracked in my tracking node until frame 100. So you can kind of see that the difference, nice and steady and clean, and then as soon as we hit 100, the motion is going to be introduced back in. So another way we could use this information is to actually match move or have something match the movement of the particular footage. And by the way, you can see it's stabilizing it because you can see it moving the borders of the shot as it's going through. So you can see here's our border right here. Let me go and just use the end right here. And it's actually moving it around to try and keep it centered on the shot. So it's kind of cool how much it's doing on the fly basically. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and match something to this shot instead. So I'm gonna go and just create a basic test. I'll do a color wheel. And I'll merge it on top of my footage. I'll just disconnect this tracker just for a moment and I'll merge it on top of the footage. And I'll press one to view it. And it's way too big right now. So I'll go and press T for transform and I'll just go ahead and use the outer circle here and shrink it down. I could obviously use the numbers over here as well. I'll just go ahead and place it on our shot. And I'll put it close to maybe on the point of our triangle or something along those lines. Just so I can see if it's moving around. Actually, I'll put it in the center of the triangle. And of course, right now, so this is actually a spot where our reference frame will come in use because I have this centered right now, or mostly centered, and I'm on frame 98. So let's just keep that in mind. All right, so if I just go ahead and place this back right now, I have my color wheel on top of the moving footage, well, doesn't look like it's sticking to that spot at all. If I go ahead and go back, what was it, frame 98? I forgot, I think yeah, I said frame 98. If I plug in the tracker to this color wheel, it is going to follow along. Well, actually, so sorry, I need to go to my tracker. I'll go back to uh, frame 98 where it was centered. So I'll disable this so I can see that centered. And I need to go ahead and set this to, from stabilize, remember, it, it's inverted the values right now, and set it to match move. So I'll just do match move one point, so I only have one point. But you can see it's not centered the way that I actually was expecting it to be. Now it is going to follow along. It looks like it's sticking to that spot right now, which is what I want, but it's not actually centered like it was on frame 9A, and that's because on my tracker node, remember when I aligned it, if I disable this tracker, when I aligned it on frame 98, with the transform node, my reference frame inside of my tracking node itself is set to frame one. Remember, that's when I started tracking. So if I want my zero, zero, meaning where it's gonna start aligning it to be frame 98, I need to say set to current frame or type in 98. And now you can see the translation. I'm gonna undo that real quick so you can see. So based on frame one, it had to move it 10 pixels to the right and 27 pixels up based on frame one.
But since I wanted to say, okay, this is my zero, zero, this is where that grid is starting right here, I need to say set to current frame, and now frame 98 is my zero, zero point, and it's gonna move it from that point and line it up from there. So now if I go back to frame one, or sorry, re-enable my tracker actually, so just D for disable and D again to re-enable. Now if I go back to my beginning, close these down and play, it looks like this is actually sticking to that spot. And when we hit, hit frame 100, the tracker doesn't have any information and it's gonna stop tracking. So that's a one point track using stabilization and match moving. Now, not very exciting example, let's go ahead and move on and find some other ones. So this is some footage that was taken when I went on a vacation to Cabo and I just thought it was a really beautiful sunset. Uh, I was getting off of a little tour bus or whatever it was. I didn't have a tripod. But I kind of knew that, okay, well, if I have a point of reference that I can track, I can actually stabilize this footage and make it look like a really nice, steady shot. So you can see that everything's swaying around, but what's probably not moving in this? Well, probably the tree, unless the trunk is, is really swaying in the wind, I have a spot right here that's not really moving. So what do I not want to track? Maybe is the best place to start. What I don't want to track is something that's moving. So any of these branches on the palm tree or the leaves or anything like that, that's moving around. That's not gonna be a good candidate because I'm basically trying to eliminate the camera move. And if something's moving along independent of the camera, then that's an issue. But I do have a spot here that I think I can probably track and I won't have a problem with that. So I'll go ahead and do that really quick. So I'll go ahead and do a tracker node and I'll add a track. And I'll go ahead and select this little area right here. So it's not moving that much. So this is the pattern I want to follow. It's just this guy right here. And it's not moving that much. So I don't need to probably give it too much room. And I'll go ahead and since I'm on frame 151, I'll start tracking backwards just to the beginning. I'll just go ahead and just track that much. And I'll look at this to make sure it's actually tracking correctly and sticking to that spot or that pattern region. So all is looking good so far. Now if I wanted to finish a shot, I can go to where I started or close to where I started and then I just start tracking in the other direction and let it finish up going the other direction until the entire shot is finished. All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and in my tracker, I'll go to the transform node and set this to stabilize one point. And now if I go ahead and take a look at this, you can see it has offset my shot overall. And I can go ahead and move that back into roughly the center of the frame if I want to. So I'll go ahead and press T for transform and kind of center this back up again. So I'm seeing the majority of the frame. But now if I go ahead and play this back while I'm viewing the tracker that's set to match move or to stabilize, this shot aside from any rotation that was in the camera should be pretty steady now. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish up and load a little bit and we'll take a look at this. Now one thing I haven't talked about that I should mention is that when you're tracking, sometimes it can be really helpful to look at individual color channels because they might have more contrast from the background. Now since this is, since this is pretty much silhouetted, I don't really have to worry about that because there's plenty of contrast between this point that I tracked and the background. And also the same thing with the post-it note on the previous shot. I'll go ahead and play this back here, but you can just kind of see that even though the camera was moving a lot, you can see it's compensating for the camera move. Now this scenery right here is nice and stabilized. And to fix that, basically what I would just want to do is I would do a transform node and just scale that up so I can get rid of the edges. And now I have, and I can frame it up however I want, but now I have a shot that looks like it was shot with a tripod or something really steady. So to go back to what I was saying about when you're tracking something and you want to use the color channels to get a more solid track, this is some old shake tutorial media. And uh, basically this is what they want to have is they want to have this orb on top of the building. But in this case, the building by itself is moving and the orb is not. It's, it's animated, but it's not moving along with the building itself. And if I look at the building, okay, I maybe have enough contrast to track something on this to have it move along with it. But if I look at the individual color channels, red, green, blue, if I look at the red channel, this gives me a really nice contrasty area. And what I mean by contrast is the dark areas and the light areas. There's a lot of contrast between these dials for the clock, or these, these numbers on the clock, and the rest of the shot. So what I can do here to give myself a better chance of getting a good track, and I'd probably be able to get a good track regardless. But what I can do here 
is before I start my track, I'm gonna do a shuffle node on the background, the moving part. I'm gonna just shift everything to the red channel. And that's gonna give me that contrast that I can track to make it pop a little bit more to track. So after my shuffle, I'm gonna go ahead and add a tracker node. And I'm gonna go ahead and name the shuffle. I'll double click on it just to be neat, I'll, uh, be proper. I'll, I'll say R so I know that I shuffled everything to the red channel. And in the tracker node itself, I'll go ahead and add a track. And uh, note that I am on frame 38 right now, but I'm going to move this guy. I could probably use this entire pattern since it's almost like a starburst a little bit. And I'll go ahead and make my outer area bigger. So I'll track this pattern overall. And since it's only moving vertically, the shot was just a straight vertical move, I only need to let it look vertically, right? So if the camera's only moving in a particular direction or mostly in a direction, you only need to give it that wiggle room in that particular direction. So I'm on frame 38. I'll go ahead and track backwards, and I can see that it's sticking in that spot quite well. And then I'll go ahead and track it to the end where I left off. And just to know if your track was successful, even if you're gonna match move something like this particular uh, orb right here, it's probably a good idea. Go ahead and set your shot to stabilize and just play it back. And if you put your mouse somewhere, like in the middle of that dial right there, and it doesn't deviate from that spot, you know that your track is good. And of course, also I can look over here and see that it's not really moving around. So know that my track is solid. All right, so I'm gonna do this slightly different this time around because there's a really powerful feature that you have within the tracker that they added in in some later versions of Nuke that really make things a lot easier. So I could take this tracker and I could disconnect it and connect it to this globe right here and set the tracker to match move. And yes, it is going to move the footage the same way that the original shot would be. And just to confirm that, I'll go ahead and stop this. I don't really need my shuffle note anymore, so I'll delete that. I'll just merge it on top of the uh, background. It's not gonna look right right now because this shot actually does not have an alpha channel, meaning that all this black is actually the color black. So I'm putting basically, you can see this black frame over the building. And, uh, but since it's just the light areas that I wanna keep, I can change this merge to screen, and that's basically gonna drop out the dark areas and just keep the light areas. So now I can see this on this background and aside from being out of place, it is moving along with it the way it's supposed to. But let's say I wanted to be a little bit fancier and just a more eloquent solution is that instead of plugging this tracker directly into the footage itself, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this and I'll keep it plugged in the original footage just so I know that's what I was tracking. But in the tracker note itself, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the tracker tab and you can see there's this export dialog that they've added in a number of versions back. And what I'm gonna use the drop down is to say, I'm gonna create a transform node that's linked to this tracker and it's gonna do a match move. And when I set and click create, you can see that I have a transform node just like I would create here, but you can see this little green line that's pointing towards it. It's meaning the numbers that are in here are being piped into here. And you can see it's a match move, so it's going to move the footage the same way. So now I can go ahead and plug this in here and view my final shot. And it's doing the exact same thing, but I still have this tracker off on its own that I can change later on. It's gonna dynamically update wherever I'm using that tracker. So if I wanted to have five of these orbs on this building, I could go ahead and do that, and I don't have to duplicate the trackers. But most importantly, if I change anything in this tracker node, like say I find that the tracker was off, I don't have to copy and paste or recreate this anywhere. It's automatically going to update the numbers in here. And what I mean by that, if I double click on this transform match mode node that's being linked to here, you can see this kind of dull gray or blue that's right here. Those are the numbers being piped in from this node you can see them right here and being pumped into here. So it's the same numbers, but they're being linked by expressions. And if I actually right click on here and say edit expression, you can see it's saying, okay, where am I getting this number from? Well, since it's doing a, if it's doing an invert, it's going to invert it, but it's looking at tracker three, it's looking at the center X and the tracker X. So it's basically pointing to this node, to the property center X and taking the X value and pumping it into the corresponding value. So this is a much more eloquent way of using this. And the nice thing about Nuke is they've made it where you just have to click a button and it'll automatically create that. You used to have to manually do the expressions. So let's go ahead and finish this up. I'm gonna press H to fill this. And since my globe is moving along correctly, it's just not positioned correctly, 
either before or after the match move, since I'm not going to affect scale, I'm going to go ahead and press T for transform. I'm just going to go ahead and nudge this guy down. I'm going to go and do this numerically with the Y value, so you can kind of see here. I'm just holding down the down arrow, and I'm going to line that up on the top of the building right there. That looks like it's mostly in place. I'll go and X this out so I don't see any of this left over. And when I play this back, now it looks like the orb is sticking to the top of the building. So a couple different ways we've used one point track and we used it to stabilize footage, we used the match image footage, and we also used it in a more expressions based manner so we can reuse this in other places. Because now I can say, okay, just as a quick example, if I wanted to have a color wheel on here as well. Actually, I'll just go ahead and grab the one from over here. If I want to have a color wheel on here as well, I'll go ahead and merge this on my shot and view this. Sorry, it's a little bit messy. But you can see I have the color wheel on here. I can put it wherever I want and it's going to move along with it as well. And while I do have two transform nodes, remember they're both getting their numbers from this main tracker node. So if something was off in this and I change it, it's automatically going to update in here as well. So that's really kind of the power of expressions. So hopefully you've kind of found this useful as far as one point tracking for stabilization and for match movement, and then also kind of a quick little itty bitty intro into the power of expressions in this case, using the tracker node. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next Johnny How To.